Hey, it's Justin from CanadaWhips.ca. In this video, we're going to talk about the rules for the Australian Whip Cracking Championships. Let's get started. If you are a whip cracker, chances are you've heard of Australia as the holy motherland for all things whip cracking. And that's kind of true. Most of the techniques and moves that we do are based on Australian origin, and Australia's rich history of cattle farming and whip making have really been the birthplace for many modern whip cracking techniques. Also, Australia has the AWPA, or the Australian Whip Crackers and Platters Association. And the AWPA is like the NHL of sport whip cracking in Australia. They hold the events, regulate the competitions, set the rules, and they also help to promote the sport in Australia. Really, the AWPA has two main functions. The first is to put on high level competitive competitions, and the second is to preserve the roots, culture, and heritage that whip cracking has to Australia. One cool fact is that the AWPA actually got whipcrackers to perform at the opening ceremonies of the 2000 Sydney Olympics, which helped to bring whipcracking briefly to the world stage. In 2019, I was fortunate enough to visit Australia and see these competitions in person. And when I got there, I realized that I didn't really know how they worked. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the competitions, what the rules are, and how they're scored. AWPA competitions are split into six different divisions based on age and gender. Peewees are under 8 years old, juveniles under 12 years old, juniors under 16 years old, then after that you have the ladies and the men's, and finally you have the over 45 division which is anyone over 45 years old. To win in an AWPA competition you need to score the most possible points in four sections. The first is presentation which is worth 10 points total. The second is accuracy, where you can score 20 points total. The third is a freestyle of 10 tricks, where you can score 500 points total, or 250 points per judge. And the final is a freestyle of one minute, where you can score 30 points per judge, or 60 points total. Hey guys, really quick before I get into how the different sections are scored, I just wanted to quickly shout out my Patreon. I do all of this with my own time and my own money. And over the past three weeks, I've been researching and scripting and filming and editing and waking up at 5 a.m. to walk my dog so that I can work on this before I go to work. Um, and so if you could spare a buck or two a month, I would really appreciate it. All of that money goes back into the community because all I want to do is help grow the community and make whip cracking as awesome as it can be. As well, on my Patreon, you'll have special access to bonus content, behind the scenes footage, early access to videos, and even special tutorials that are only available on Patreon. So if you could spare a couple bucks a month, I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, anyway, sorry about the shameless plug. Let's get back to the fun stuff. As I mentioned before, one of the goals of the AWPA is to preserve the rural roots and history of whip cracking in Australia. For this reason, the AWPA wants people to dress the part and act respectfully. In an AWPA competition, you're supposed to dress similar to a more Australian cattleman, which means a collared shirt, straight pants, a belt, and a wide-brimmed hat. Presentation also includes how you interact with the judges. You should be polite, confident, and respectful. It's also important that you acknowledge the judges before performing every trick. If you can do all of that, you should get 10 points for your presentation section. The second section of the competition is for accuracy, and it's for a maximum of 20 points. In this section, the competitors will try to hit 10 targets, and they must do so with a whip that has at least 6 feet of thong length. I should mention that in the AWPA competitions, you are only allowed to use Australian leather stock whips. That's right, no other types of whips are allowed. In the accuracy section, 10 styrofoam cups are lined up in a row on target stands. 5 cups need to be hit with your left hand, and 5 cups need to be hit with your right hand. It's up to the competitor to decide if they want to do five in one hand and then switch, or alternate hands between each cup. You get one attempt per target, and for each attempt, you can either get zero, one, or two points. Two points is if you cut the cup clean in half. One point is if you hit the cup and damage it. And zero points is if you miss the cup or hit it, but don't leave a mark. The third section of the competition, where you perform 10 tricks, is by far the most important for winning an Australian championship. In this section, competitors select 10 different routines that they're going to perform in front of the judges. The judges are given this list of tricks, and they ask the competitors to perform them one by one, and score them from 1 to 25 based on difficulty, 
loudness of the cracks, and proficiency with the routine. Competitors only have one chance to perform each trick, so they need to do it right, but they may bring up as many different sets of whips as they'd like to do the tricks. Most competitors will have at least three sets that they bring with them with various lengths for faster or slower tricks, but some competitors will even go as far as to have a specific set of whips for each trick in their 10 trick section. There are normally two judges for the 10 trick section and each judge can score a maximum of 25 points per trick. This means that the most a competitor could get from the 10 trick section is a total of 500 points, which is more than five times the amount of all the other sections combined. You can see why it's so important to do really well when you do your 10 tricks. The final part of the competition is a one minute freestyle, where competitors have to crack their whips for a full minute for a maximum of 30 points per judge. This one minute freestyle is scored based on continuity, difficulty, fluency, loudness of the crack, and entertainment value. Typically, competitors will include some of the tricks from their 10 tricks section in their one minute freestyle because they know that they're confident with those tricks and also that the tricks are very difficult, so they'll help them score points. Competitors demonstrate their freestyle right after the 10 trick section, so you can imagine they're very tired. Doing 10 tricks in a row as loud as you can is already exhausting, so cracking whips for a minute straight after that is really a test of endurance and strength. It's really amazing to watch the competitors do high level routines and push their bodies to the absolute limit. Once everyone has completed all the events, the highest combined score for all the different sections will win for each division. And some competitions can be really close. In 2022, the Australian champion James Scott beat Daniel Wicks by only six points to win the men's championship. So you can see how, while performance or targeting may only have 10 points or 20 points up for grabs, getting all of those points is really important if you wanna secure your spot at the top. Prizes and prize value may vary from event to event, but winners will always receive a sash and they'll get their name added to the plaque for their division. As well, a special prize goes out to the person who got the most points in the targeting section across all the divisions. And yeah, that's how the competitions work. Thanks so much for watching this video. And if you want to learn more about whips and whip cracking, always check out our website at canadawhips.ca. Good job.